Reaper is fantastic because you're constantly making it your own. I already have a video on that. I constantly keep on improving my workflow within Reaper. So I figure out why not make a video of the monthly improvements or maybe the biggest or most interesting actions and custom actions that I usually make as months go by. I'm straight from Mexico City. My name is Juanchis and let's keep on getting better at Reaper. Okay, so here we are. You have a lock setting option. I usually have it only set to items prevent left right movement because that's usually the only thing that I don't want to move. And I have a shortcut for enabling locking. That's L on my keyboard. Remember that all of these actions will be in the description of the video. So options toggle locking is set to 12. That way, if I accidentally drag something, I will I will mess up my whole session. So by pressing L once, I have the visual feedback that I can no longer move them left and right, but I can move them up and down. And this is usually a lot more useful. So for editing, I usually have different shortcuts for splitting the media items usually you don't want to edit when when you're away from the zero line because this is going to generate some clicks and that's something you don't want so my first action would be split at previous zero crossing that way whenever i'm selecting any part of the waveform and i hit that shortcut it's going to go back looking for the previous zero crossing and it's going to cut there. From there, you can create crossfades or anything you want, but now you have a clean cut that usually also goes very well hand in hand with maybe you just want to cut something because you're looking it from far away and you're cleaning up the session and maybe you're trying to cut these two hits for whatever reason. And I just hit E on my keyboard and I split item under mouse cursor and select left. That way I'm always cutting and then selecting the left media item that was left. And another one that's usually very useful is for example if I'm editing a group within time selection of something, I can just group all of my media items with G, time select something by, mid by clicking between two markers and I can just split items at time selection. That way all of them get split and now that's done. It's so much easier, according to me, to have a faster editing workflow. This usually goes very well hand in hand with another action for selecting tracks. So for example, whenever I'm trying to edit this using more my keyboard, I can just cut a media item with command X. I just select the previous track, paste it. I made a new custom action that I named cut with time restraint. So I have two actions that are happening. I move cursor left to edge of the item and then edit cuts the item. That way, even though I'm looking from really far away and I'm trying to edit something, I can just select it, command X, select the previous track, paste, and now it's in the same place where I want it to be. And remember that the actions that I'm using to move between the next track and the previous track are only parts of the keyboard that I selected so I find it close enough. Another action that I find really useful is decrease peaks and increase peaks display from zoom. Peaks display zoom for project. That sometimes helps me a lot because some audios might be really low. For example, these sound channels and maybe I'm trying to figure out how much bleeding of something would be. This doesn't affect the gain, the actual gain. It, this only affects the waveform display so we can have a better look into what's going on or what's the bleeding. For example, in this track, all of this is a little bit of snare, a little bit of hat, and the actual tom hit is right here. So I have more than enough space between the bleeding and the tom hit. So another custom action that I often use because that's from my Ableton Live workflow is they have a shortcut where you only press Z on your keyboard and it zooms you into that media item. So for example, I want to zoom into this, only this kick in media item, right? And I either have to use the magnifying glass and that's like way too much work or I can only hit one key and it will zoom me into it. Let me show you. I did a custom action for this. I'm going to edit the action 
and I'm using a combination of vertical zoom, vertical zoom to selected items, minimize others, horizontal zoom to selected items, and set time selection to items. Because most likely you will probably end up wanting to work in a loop once you cut something. For me, it simply makes sense. And the way I go back to the previous version, to the previous zoom size, I'm using restore previous zoom level. So that's a combination of two keys with the X and the C. That way I can go in and out really, really fast. And a couple of real packs that I've been using that I found really, really interesting are smart trim that I was also missing from Pro Tools. That means that whenever I have my mouse at certain spots, I can just click one key and it deletes everything behind it. And if I hit another combination, it's going to remove everything after it. And this is really good for faster editing. So the action for that is CS Smart Trim Left Edge Lua and Right Edge. On the rear pack, you can just look for the Smart Trim features. Our dear Leandro made an oscilloscope because I have been trying to set up some oscilloscopes to run some tests and I found that his is flexible enough so that way I can have several oscilloscopes to look at the waveforms whenever I'm trying to do things. It has a visualization within the chan within the mixer panel. That That's something I really like some of the times. And you can fiddle around with enough stuff to, to have some information, some actual, in actual information of what's going on with your audio. So yeah, check out Leafax Oscilloscope, also written in the description. And my favorite action that I recently found is maybe you're loading some instruments and you want to name them just like the plugin, I found an action as rename selected tracks as first FX by MPL as expected. And now I have an analog lab, a Sorge, an EXO, and a Mellotron. And look what will happen to the name of the tracks. That is so much faster for working. So those are some of the actions and custom actions and rear pack add-ons that I did uh, some of them during the last month and some are just part of my usual workflow but since this video is new why not start sharing some of my common practices of what I do within Reaper. If you like this kind of videos be sure to like, comment, subscribe and all of those things that people on YouTube say. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.